of our one of our first patents. It's a tiny little thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Secrets. Look at this. So I say, well, we're here. We're in a, we're in like a. I want to say Takeshi's Castle, but it's not Takeshi's Castle, is it? It's like a, a labyrinth of exciting aero stuff with Zab and Jess from Aero Coach. And we're basically doing a fit on my rim brake S5 to see how aero we can make that with the aim of me doing some road bike time trials on it. And the start thing is setting up some very, very lovely fast wheels. where we see lots of swearing. Should be it should be fine to get it everything in. It's just getting it seated that's the problem. Big strong man. Yeah. You're a big strong man. <laughs> oh you get the cool hubs. The little the like the shape of the hub. Is is this filmable yet? Yeah yeah definitely yeah. So the shape of the hub, because um, Chris is riding the UK these are banned by the UCI um, and in a rather high profile Grand Tour a couple of years ago, one of the teams that was using our wheels uh, got in a lot of trouble after a race uh, because they were UCI decided that these were too aerodynamic, which we disagreed with, but we had to sort it out with them um, and uh, changed it up. But because Chris raced in, the UCI, uh, raced in the UK, you're not under UCI rules, so you can have basically a lot more free reign over what you can use. So um, you get the funky hubs and everyone else who races in the continent has to have uh, standard round hubs. Right, let's get the back wheel done. Um, that's cool, that. Welcome to 1998 yeah. time trial, <laughs> where everyone rides tyres that are basically solid tyres. Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is cool. Valve technology. A lot of people who are watching this probably don't know who aero coach are but if you've been watching any uh, like world tour bike races you've probably seen aero coach products somewhere i'm not gonna say anymore um generally speaking for a single ring minimum 1128 is a good idea but 1130 is great because it just gives you the bailout gear at the top and if you have a big chain ring on because that's what's 54 yeah keeps you in the center of the cassette for longer which is yeah better for efficiency so the the bars that chris has got on the bike these onyx bars if you have a look at them the way the stem clamp sits relative to the top section is, is set backwards so normally on a set of bars the stem is in line with this tops bit whereas we've got an extra section here which effectively pushes the bars forwards the reason why we do that is because these are purely designed as a race bar your body position with extended reach is often a little bit more aerodynamic and it allows you to increase the reach and get more clearance for sprinting and being out the saddle which was something that we worked on with the bar with using normal kit so without having to change the stem length you can increase the reach just by putting the bar on but if you already have a narrow bar and it ends up being too much reach then you might need to put a uh, nightmare needs to put a short stem on. Yeah. So we'll have a look and see what it looks like. One thing you can do is move the saddle forwards um, because that gets you over the bottom bracket, potentially yeah. a bit better for a power output and then keep the reach. But um, the bars are quite particular. It is very much a racing bar. So um, the goal is to get you into an aero position, not necessarily for long distance comfort, but for getting aero. This is no way a fit for riding multi-day bikepacking no. ride. No, <laughs> absolutely not. Yeah. No. This is about efficiency and the aero sense, not efficiency as in comfort sense. It's very different to any other stuff we've talked about and we're with the best people for that. The chainring that Chris has got on his bike is a, an Atom chainring, which is one of our aero ones. And you can see how the chain links basically meld with the chainring. So as the chain passes over it, we've now got absolutely seamless um, transition between the ch side of the chain and the chain ring which is slightly curved basically all adds up to make the the package quite a lot quicker than I say quite a lot quicker it's all marginal isn't it but it is faster than a uh, than a whole, a whole setup with the front derailleur um, Chris also got an a fixed chain guide here so if you ride on really really bumpy roads or you hit a muscle pothole or something you don't want to lose your chain even though it's narrow wide um, so we're gonna just adjust that slightly just to lower it to get the top of the affix, which is the chain guide, right on top of the chain, so there's no chance of it coming out. So what we're doing here is just measuring your, um, basically the stability, we just want to make sure that you're, um, if there's a point at which you start rocking around too much, then um, Ooh, we'll stop doing that, sorry. <laughs> So 
so there is so there is a decent amount of reach there you can see that um but as we're saying the purpose of the bike is to get you into an aero position when you're doing a road bike fit for for aero in particular torso angle is the thing that we um we look at when we're in the wind tunnel or at velodrome or whatever there's a lot greater correlation between your aerodynamic drag and your torso angle on a road bike than there is if you're on a tt bike so on a tt bike where because you've got your hands in front of you that affects what happens to the aerodynamics and the air sorry the airflow going around the rest of the body um, it's not just about torso angle it's not lower is better but on a road bike generally speaking getting lower is good as long as it's sustainable and as long as you're comfortable and as long as your arms are in uh, the right place but your arms aren't breaking the airflow over the body they're allowing it to go through so having a slightly lower torso angle with relatively clean airflow is is generally speaking a good idea that is yeah. what we're after because the, because they slope up the bars slope up yeah it gives you something to to put your wrists on everything's in line with the shoulders here yeah which is what we're what we want really so, you, so one thing one problem that people sometimes have is trying to get narrow on a road bike they turn the levers in and if you turn the levers in if you just simulate what happens to the yeah you end up sometimes doing that because of the way you have to hold the lever if it's been like rammed inwards yeah. and i don't like people ramming their levers in it's not safe you can't get the brakes properly it looks dangerous it is dangerous so we designed the, those bars to be at an angle anyway and you can't if you want to put the cables through the bars you can't turn the levers in we stop people from doing it so <laughs> um, uh, to make it actually rideable so it means that when you do um, grab the bars you're, everything's, yeah, everything's more in line if we look at you from the side there's there's enough reach so if you have too little reach then you'll be cracking your knees on your elbows generally speaking like if you have like long arms and things your knees will be inside your elbows so like for me for example I, I, there's no way i can do that you know, it has to go to the inside yeah. but we can definitely shift everything back a bit mm -hmm. and still have everything in line so there's enough room yeah yeah definitely yeah the other the other thing the reason why i think there might be a bit too much reach is because your forearms aren't perfectly horizontal parallel yet i'd quite like to turn the tilt the bars up a bit to bring your elbows down because at the moment for you to drop your elbows to horizontal would be quite yeah quite a job so I'm not, I'm not considering that we're going to do that but if we reduce the reach a little bit potentially we increase the stack slightly we could put a spacer underneath it yeah. and that what that'll do is it'll stop your arms from from being at this angle and everything will stay the same we'll just bring your arms up and having a horizontal arm would be a good idea because horizontal to the airflow is great and if you have like you know if you have your arms like that and you're effectively creating a a, a channel for the air to go straight up into your body mm. whereas the more you can go horizontal the less frontal area there is and the more the airflow will just go over the arm and then past you and around the body better i think we'll uh, we'll start with that i think we'll put the shorter stem on we'll raise the stack a little bit and then we'll um we'll see where we are oh right by the belly button <laughs> Well, we're looking at a few things. What I really want to see is whether um, you, you don't look unstable. Like you, you ride a lot, and if you have people who don't ride loads and don't have good core stability, then they will they will rock, rock about. Lot. Yeah, rock about a bit. Um, what will be interesting to see is when we. Um, so obviously we've got torso angle on here, so um, we want to see that decrease or at least maintain, even if we raise it up and move the bars back. Mm. Um, what I'd like to see is um, whether we can get you a little bit more. A little bit more kind of locked in. So if you go in the bars now, let's look at the camera. Don't look at the screen. Look at the camera. Right. So obviously your torso angle has gone down quite a lot. You know, it's now more like to 10, 10 or 11 degrees from horizontal, um, which is great. We don't really need that to be any lower than that. The amount that you're rocking has just gone up slightly because it's just a more unstable position. You're compressing your hip flexors. It's not, yeah, it's not a natural position to be in. So what we want to try and do is to make that aero position as aero if not a little bit more aero but more stable so that you can get the power up but we could flip the stem and that would really really fuck with people it would people would lose their nuts <laughs> it, it does feel shorter and taller <laughs> doesn't make any sense does it <laughs> so how does that how does that feel less stretch yeah yeah it should be you knee, your long. knees aren't cracking your elbows we've gone from here to here yeah, that's that's all I've wanted to do is just get your hands in the same place. So your, your torso stays in the same place, and you've just you've just gone like that. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, keep keep pedaling. It's putting a bit of an easier gear. That's that's naturally what feels comfortable. Mm -hmm. 
filling the gap between your heads. So chuck this one on and I mean you know this more for the but this looks great with that obliser on this helmet. Oh <laughs> So one of the interesting things about your position is obviously you've got a, like a, a hunch in your back. If we were putting you on a TT bike and trying to do a TT position, we'd probably want to manipulate your position to give you more reach to basically reduce the hump a little bit. On the road bike, I'd much rather you were comfortable and could sit there properly. And the way the angles are on the bike, you can't rotate your hips enough to get rid of the hunch. Because generally speaking, when people are on a road bike, they will sit on the bike and then if you're trying to get into aero position, reach forward for the handlebars. Mm -hmm. So you end up like hunched like this. On a TT bike, you sit on the bike, but you rotate forwards because the angles of it and the saddles don't have, you know, things that will cause pain when you try and rotate forwards. What we don't want to do is put you in a position where you'll, you, you have to be rotated forwards and you have to have a TT saddle and all this kind of thing, because then you just couldn't you ride the bike nicely. Right? You might as well ride a TT bike. So instead, we want a position where you can Go uphill on that if you want to it's not a problem outside also that you know that's fine um and i think that the your head position is going to be quite critical because there is a gap here and if we can just get the top of that a little bit lower just by kind of like scrunching in so if we put the road helmet back on again the second one looks great though it's amazing uh, yeah. that position's insane um, other things that we're looking at in terms of things like stuff like leg extension that's all fine we've got a kind of 90 degree angle between your uh, your shin and your foot as we come down as you hit the power phase here, this is all fine, this is all fine, you're maintaining the angle, maintaining the angle, that's all fine. At the bottom of the pedal stroke here, um, it's a, your foot's like pouring out a little bit, um, but that is, that's okay. So it's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. Let's do, um, let's do a couple of different positions on the bike, just to see what it looks like in the drops, whether up the drops, etc. Baseline position, it's not too short, it's not overreached as well, it's not too extended. Like you wouldn't want to go another 20 mil further forwards. And I think if you went back, it would be more kind of like, yeah, a little bit too upright. As we go to the hoods, on the longer end of what you'd want for a road bike fit, because you can see that normally in that kind of position, when someone's in the hoods, they'd have their arms bent slightly. But if you did that, you'd be leaning forward a bit, a bit too much. So. When you're in the drops, that is definitely a midway between that mm. and that. Yeah. So it'll be really good for like descending or you want to get a bit of power out or something. Obviously it's it's better than sat straight up. And I, I really, I mean, I'm by a stripe, but I really like those drops for um, descending and stuff. I find that the, the shape of them is just, it feels like, it feels great. This position looks worse. Yeah. And look at how you're really like, you really, as you go up, you're really tense Mate, I look like a stegosaurus. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And you can see that now your elbows are going to be in like a little bit further behind where your knees are and things. So I wouldn't, for you, I wouldn't use this position. I would only use the aero hoods position. And if you lose that because you're fatiguing or your arms hurt or whatever, then you move to the drops instead. I don't think there's much more that we can do to make this bike much faster, really. You've got the single ring, you've got the bottle, you've got the funky front brake. You got funky bars. So yeah, well, you know, it's get, like get you in a race. Let's get some. Oh, yeah.